We've been designing Jetpacks since the 50s, and yet, to date, the most successful flights by Jetpack have yet to hit the 60-second mark. In the 1950s, Bell Aerosystems, the company behind the first supersonic aircraft, began developing a rocket pack for the U.S. Army. The Bell Aerosystems Company, under contract to U.S. Army Transportation Research Command, has demonstrated the feasibility of controlled free flight with a rocket mounted on a man's back. Shown here in the feasibility configuration used for the 38 free flights, the rocket belt consists of a body-contoured fiberglass corset which serves as a mount for the propellant and pressurant tanks and valving. The pivot bearing, which is the attachment point for underarm rings, control arms, gas generator, manifold and nozzles, is affixed to the main propulsion system support frame. To indicate the amount of propellant remaining, visual and audio signals were abandoned in favor of a more reliable vibratory signal applied through a bone conduction device located in the helmet. Turns out, the human body is a very shaky and unstable object when airborne. With the ground so close, parachutes were not an option, leaving the pilot with no cushion during frequent emergency landings. On December 29, 1960, the first manned rocket flight was attempted, using tether ropes for the operator's safety. Maximum safety precautions dictated the use of a lower tether, which proved to be much too inhibiting to the operator's freedom of movement. This first introduction of man to machine illustrates well the problems of thrust control and system stability. Moving outdoors, the operator soon learned that a rearward fall with power off could be averted by short rocket bursts to assist his return to an upright position. In the early flights, the gimbaled nozzles were fixed in a neutral or centered position and locked. Even the slightest misalignment of the two nozzles induced the rotation, however, and so various degrees of gimbal freedom were evaluated. It was discovered that when the nozzles were parallel to the operator, the jet wake would occasionally deflect his legs and cause a pendulum effect. To correct this, the nozzles were canted outward at a five degree angle, which directed the exhaust away from the lower extremities. No further difficulties were encountered with jet effects on the operator's legs. Despite what we see in the movies or in cartoons, we're still a long way away from man propelling himself through the air with a canister of nitrogen gas and hydrogen peroxide.